Hey, what's up, guys? Today, I'll show you a science fiction action film, The Time Machine. Spoiler ahead, watch out and take care. The movie begins in a busy school in 1899, where a young doctor named Alex is solving an equation on the board. He works at the university as a professor. His good friend and fellow professor, David, reminds him that he has plans with his girlfriend, Emma, tonight. When he realizes that it's 5 p.m. already, he and David rush out of the empty classroom. On the way back to his apartment, both of them discuss their outlooks on teaching their students. David says that he wants his students to be prepared for the real world and wants them to look at the realities that they would face, but Alex remarks that he wants his students to break away from the mold. Once inside the apartment, Alex's housekeeper greets them. He asks if she received the package, but she deflects the questions and tells him to first change his jacket because it looks filthy. She mentions that another letter from an annoying little man came for him today. They enter his study hall, where many of Alex's inventions are out displayed. David takes an interest in a vibrating toothbrush, and Alex mentions that it would be able to keep people's teeth healthy until the age of 40. David asks why he is still exchanging letters with the annoying little man, called Einstein, who works as a bookkeeper. He looks at the sketches of Alex, which serve as diagrams for what the future would look like. He asks Alex if they are going too far with advancement, to which Alex says no. Alex changes his jacket, picks up a pocket watch, and goes out to meet Emma. Later that evening, Alex stops by a flower stand to buy flowers for Emma, but is sidetracked as he sees an automobile near the stand. The driver tries desperately to fix the engine, but it proves to be very difficult. He offers Alex a ride around the square, but Alex declines. Moments later, Alex meets Emma in the ice skating rink. She reminds him about the flowers he promised her, but Alex tells her that he forgot about them because he lost focus. He then pulls her away to talk to her. He tells her that he has not been sleeping well lately, and the only thing that would remedy it is if she would marry him. She hugs him in delight, and he reaches out of his suit pocket and brings out a moonstone ring. Suddenly a mysterious man comes out of the bushes and congratulates them on their engagement. He then threatens them with a gun and tells them to hand over all their money and valuables, but Emma refuses to give up a ring. The man tries to take it from her, but she fights back and ultimately gets shot. The man leaves and Alex tries to help Emma, but she dies in his arms. Four years after the death of Emma, Alex buries himself in his research, so he won't have to deal with his grief. David comes to visit him and asks what has happened to him. Alex tries to send David away, but he remains adamant that he must at least cure him out first. He tells Alex that what happened to Emma was not his fault. Alex tells him that he understands that it was not his fault, but the blame is still on somebody else. David tells him that he cannot change what happened, but Alex corrects him and says that there's a way to change what happened. He asks that David return in a week, so that he may show him what he has been working on all this time. Later, Alex dresses up and grabs the pocket watch that Emma gave him. He lifts the curtains in his study hall and reveals a machine he has created. He sits on the machine and gets it working. He then pushes the final lever, which sends him back through time. He comes back to the night Emma died. He arrives at the ice skating rink ahead of time. Emma approaches him, telling him that this is the first time she has seen him arrive early. Emma asks for the flowers he promised her, but he kisses her instead and tells her that they should talk in the city. They get inside a carriage and ask the driver to head into the city quickly. As they walk through the city streets, Emma notices that Alex is shaking and asks him if anything is wrong. He remarks that it's wonderful to be able to walk down the street with her again. She is confused because to her, they walked together only three days ago. A man in an automobile rides up near them and Alex mentions that he has already seen it. She finds this even more out of character for Alex. He tells her to stay in her apartment for the rest of the night and he'll come over later. He apologizes and tells her that he loves her. She agrees but first asks for her flowers. Alex sees a flower shop nearby and tells her to wait. He heads inside the flower shop and asks for a dozen roses, unbeknownst to him that the automobile from earlier malfunctions and causes an incoming carriage to crash into Emma. He rushes outside and slowly approaches the scene where he sees Emma lying lifeless on the floor. In the hospital waiting room, David finds Alex sitting by himself. He tells Alex that he's sorry for his loss, but Alex simply wonders why he cannot change this moment in time. He comes to the conclusion that he could come back a thousand times and still see Emma die a thousand more times. David asks him what he means, but Alex tells him that he cannot find the answer here, but perhaps the answer is somewhere else. He readjusts the time machine and once again travels through time. He pulls the lever which sends him to the future. As time passes around him, he notices the changes that have happened throughout history. He accidentally drops a locket containing the picture of Emma. He reaches out to grab it outside, but his hand starts aging rapidly, and he pulls it back. 
He finally arrives in the future, and immediately a massive billboard on a busy street catches his attention. The ad plane mentions paradise colonies on the moon. A woman notices him and compliments his outfit for being retro. The woman sees the time machine and mistakes it for a giant coffee machine. Alex explores the future, while people eye him for his outfit. He enters a museum, where an AI introduces itself to him. He's amazed at the capabilities of the AI and asks what it knows about physics. The AI reveals all sorts of articles on physics, but when Alex asks for articles on time travel, the AI brings up science fiction. He asks once more why can't one change the past? The AI tells him it is impossible to change the past because he cannot travel through time. The AI turns to leave, but Alex chases it down. The AI then brings up articles on time travel, but Alex finds no answers from them. He decides that he will have more answers in another few hundred years. He comes back to the time machine and tries to go back through time, but a sudden shake stops the process. He exits out of the time machine and notices that the city is burning. All of a sudden, an armored military car spots him and two soldiers restrain him. He asks what's going on, and they reveal that when they tried to demolish the lunar colonies, the gravitational pull of the moon was altered, causing different anomalies to happen on Earth. He manages to break free from the soldiers and runs straight into the time machine. But unfortunately, the restraints make it hard for him to set a destination, and the constant shaking causes him to bump his head and set a random destination for the time machine. He travels through time years into the future, where the Earth has reverted back into its natural form. He awakens to find that his wounds are treated. He calls out for anyone, but no one responds. He puts on his clothes and spots a young boy speaking an unknown language to him. He steps out of the place he's housed in, only to see an entire community built upon cliffs, connected by many bridges, and he's dumbfounded by what he's seeing. The villagers from the community gather around him, all speaking in a language he does not understand. A tribal woman approaches him and tells him that she can also speak English. The villagers murmur, and the woman tells him that they're trying to decide whether or not they should throw him into the river. He tells her that he's actually from the past. The woman translates to her people, and they laugh their smelly shit off. She reveals to him that she told them he hit his head and is now a wandering idiot. The villagers retreat into their homes once they hear a horn in the distance. They tell him that they are getting ready for the war. He goes with the tribal woman and the young boy from earlier. In the evening, the young boy asks Alex many questions about his origin and the people from his city. The tribal woman tells the young boy to go to sleep, and she soon follows. Alex follows her up into her room, where he notices the moon in the sky, cracked and fragmented. Alex wakes up from a nightmare, but comes down from his bed because the young boy started screaming. The tribal woman tells him that the boy had a nightmare, which Alex finds strange because so did he. She tells him that everyone in the village has the same dream. He asks her what the word Morlock means, and she tells him that it means a child's dream. Alex goes back to sleep. The next day, the tribal woman shows Alex to the place where they keep stones, with words engraved on them. He recognizes them as old street signs and gravestones. She then asks why Alex came to this certain point in time. He tells her he needs to have the answer to the question of why he couldn't change the past. She realizes that Alex has lost someone he loved very much, and that is why he wants to change the past. Moments later, the two of them row a Tesla boat down a river. He asks the tribal woman why there weren't any old people in the village. She says that some things are better left unsaid. They finally arrive at their destination, where they are greeted by the young boy and the other villagers. The little boy wants to come along with them to see the time machine, but they tell him to stay with the other villagers. They find the time machine in good condition. She asks him if he could take the young boy back with him in his time. Alex asks her why, but she's adamant that he must take the boy with him. Suddenly, the horn is heard from the distance, and they run back to where the young boy was. The villagers start panicking and rush to their safety as creatures start firing at them with blow darts. The tribal woman is hit by a dart, but Alex manages to pull it out. He notices that the darts are covered in a black gooey substance. The villagers try to run to the boats, but creatures emerge from the ground, blocking their path. The creatures start hunting down those who were hit by the darts and abduct them. A creature starts chasing the young boy, but Alex manages to fight back. He climbs to the top of one of the wooden towers, but the creature chases him up. They fall off the tower, but the young boy fends off the monster with a torch. The monster hears the sound of the horn again and retreats, accompanied by the screams of the tribal woman. Alex tries to save her, but the creatures manage to take her. Alex tries to convince the villagers to fight back, but they refuse. The young boy reveals to Alex that no one knows where they take the villagers abducted by the creatures, but they do know a place where ghosts remain. The young boy takes Alex to the ruins of the museum, where the AI system still remains functional. He asks the AI if it knows what happened, and the AI tells them that humanity evolved into two different species. 
one that lives above ground and the other below. The AI tells him a way to escape the creatures and save the abducted villagers through the east of the jungle. Alex and the boy make their way to where the creatures are located, and he asks the boy to stay behind while he enters alone. Inside the entrance is a deep chasm filled with traps to the very bottom. He manages to make his way down, where he sees the entirety of the underground civilization. He finds the tribal woman's clothes among a pile of others, and he realizes that the people are being eaten. He loses his footing and falls into a pit, where the decomposing bodies of other dead villagers are thrown. He is soon captured by the creatures and thrown in jail. Inside the jail, he finds the tribal woman caged. He tries to talk to her, but she doesn't respond. He looks at the creature sitting on the throne in front of him. The creature introduces itself as the leader and reveals to Alex that he controls the creatures, as well as the minds of the villagers. He uses the villagers as food for them, as well as breeding vessels for other colonies. Alex falls into an illusion that he is in a time when Emma survived and they started a family. The leader of the creatures removes the illusion and reveals that the reason why he can't change the past is simply that he is his own inescapable result and that Emma's death must happen so that he will build the time machine and end up here in the future. The leader of the creatures brings down the time machine into the jail and tells Alex that he can go back if he wants to. Alex tries to fight the leader of the creatures by using the time machine, but he is almost knocked unconscious until he starts the time machine and knocks the creature outside, where it rapidly ages and dies. He stops the time machine and is brought to a time when the creatures finally rule the world. After that, he goes back in time and frees the tribal woman from the cage. He then inserts his pocket watch between the gears of the time machine, providing a distraction for them to escape the monsters. The two of them run through the various traps on the way to the entrance, while the creatures chase them from behind. The time machine overloads and explodes, causing the underground colony to collapse and killing the creatures within. With his time machine gone, Alex is now stuck in the future. But he has no regrets. He's ready to start a new life. Alex shows the young boy and the tribal woman where his lab used to be. Back in Alexi's original time, David visits the housekeeper, asking about Alexi's whereabouts, but she says that he has been gone the whole week. David hires the housekeeper for his household until Alex comes back. The movie ends with David looking back at the laboratory one more time. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.